This big beautiful bot turns into a leg and that's no bull or bison buffalo boy cow that's basically what this guy turns into this is the Jinbao KO oversized version of Bovis who of course is part of MMC's Feral Rex and this is the Nero Rex repaint and of course all of that is an homage to the Transformers Predacon character known as Tantrum. By far the coolest name of the bunch, at least in my humble opinion. Stick around, we're going to have a look at this guy and everything to do with him in the latest Got By True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share, and more important than ever, I'm really going to ask you to subscribe. Stick with us, join the community, have a voice. Check me out everywhere, have a look at Machinery of Man and the Everything Factor, and let's get on to this guy, shall we? Um, this is a remold, basically, of the... Fortis figure, the one that turns into a ram, the other leg of our Predaking combiner. And of course, we're looking back at these guys in 2018 to sort of see if they still hold up over time. And I think you might, if you've been following along, be noticing a theme with these guys by now. In fact, you might be noticing that different incarnations fit in different places. Well, we're going to talk about this guy and how the oversize fits in, and of course, where the actual release fits in and its size, as well as touch on the TFC Ares version of this character. There is a lot to talk about and a lot to consider, and this guy is strong but not perfect. Honestly, he is very similar to Fortis, and understandably so, since they do share most parts of their mold. The Remolded head here. I don't know if it works quite as well. I'll let you be the judge of that I will say this and I will discuss it further a little bit later in order for this head to go completely back We need to take the combiner peg and fold it down into the back That's difficult because it is an extremely strong ratcheted peg we did not need to do that with Fortis. We were able to leave it up and his rhino head could sort of rest on it and it sort of worked out okay. I don't know if this head is bigger. Probably with the horns. But, that being said, I don't know if it's more effective. By the way, and I'm not really sure why, but the horns can move on this guy. I don't think I really talk about that later on at any point, but they, they do if you want them to for whatever reason, though I can't really see a reason to move them. I like the guy. He certainly is not perfect. And you may notice that his thighs seem a little bit thinner because we don't have the thigh filler pieces out on them, like we did with Fortis. And there's a reason for that. I'll talk about that as we get into his articulation. Anyway, I think I've probably babbled on long enough now. How about we head over to the table and take a closer look at the details of Bovis. And we have another day and another leg. This time it is the Jinbao oversized Nero Rex repaint of Feral Rex Bovis, who of course, as previously mentioned, is based on the Transformers Predacon character known as Tantrum. I love that name, by the way. And <clears throat> this one hopefully is going to be kind of kind of quick because we've sort of already looked at this mold. This is a uh, remold of Fortis and works pretty much the same way. So this one this one shouldn't hopefully take too long. Um, I will say this: we are in the leg mode now. And I do not have the combiner peg up on the back. It is down in his back because unlike uh, the 
other version of this mold where you can transform it leaving the peg up and bring the head back and bring the face down. This time you can't do that. You have to have this down for this head to go back in robot mode. Uh, I don't have it up because it, it's a combiner peg. It is what it is and it is on a very heavy ratchet so you need something really to kind of wedge it up. By the way, you'll notice that there's a red splotch here. I don't know what that is about. No idea. But uh, same comments here. It's a leg and because of all the junk here kind of hanging out on the back, a, a lot of kibble there, it does have a bit of an effect on the articulation. It is what it is. Uh, these pieces here, I angle them this way. I find that it's the least obtrusive because it's sort of out of the way from up here. Uh, some people angle them different ways. You can sort of rotate these even after they're pegged in to your liking. Let's look at his accessories real quick and then we will kind of get into the transformation and the articulation. And we have two of these gorgeously painted blasters. There are uh, rectangular pegs for the handles. They can go pegged on the arm in uh, rounded slots, which again I still think is odd. The like originally painted version of these is a just a bland gray. I, I guess it's just probably gray plastic. Uh, I love the purple here. This looks glorious to me. And we have these two swords that have black handles and I guess silver blading. Uh, the again, the actual version of these is completely gold. Um, they have pegs again that allow them to go on the arms. Uh, pfft, they can go held in the hand kind of tediously, but it it can work. It can happen. They look pretty fantastic though. It's such an interesting design. Now, if you saw my look at uh, for this, then you probably noticed that I talked about how the lower leg section uh, had been uh, incorrectly applied to this guy and that guy. They've been switched. It's kind of interesting. I went back and checked that. On the Nero Rex version, that is not the case. This chunk here, first of all, this whole chunk here is what's supposed to be there. But this chunk, this hind hoof of the animal mode, this is what's supposed to be there according to the um, actual MMC Feral Rex. So, I guess they were correctly applied this time, I suppose. Um, the last of his accessories is this giant foot and it allows movement left, left and right, but that's about it. There's a little forward and back tilt, but nothing really on the foot itself. It's a static piece. I don't know if that's the same for the actual release or not, but it certainly is in this case. Alright, so let's get that off and then we can start looking at getting this guy out of limb mode and into something else. So we split the legs here and we remove this guy. As far as the foot piece itself goes, you just Turn this whole section around, if you can, and you just bring it down like that. And now we can take this off, and we'll look at it a little bit later, because it does peg on. There are four holes underneath here. We'll talk about how they go on. Okay, now the last time that we looked at this mold, I sort of stumbled over the feet a little bit, and we went to robot and then to his animal modes because I showed two animal modes. Um, here's the thing. You can keep the waist oriented this way and have it be the animal mode or you can turn the waist around. I think if you leave it this way it's not as effective because this chunk here ends up on the kind of belly of the beast so to speak and his folded up feet end up being part of the back. I don't like that look, but it's certainly easiest to get to. Um, so we're going to go to the animal modes first and I'll, I'll sort of just quickly show that because we can sort of do it on the road to going to the correct mode or what I think is the correct mode or at least what I think is the better looking mode. In this case, we tilt the head up 
And like I said, you need to have the combiner peg down this time in order for the head to go all the way back. Then we come back here and we unpeg these sections. They are pegged into the feet of the robot mode. So you lift it off and it was pegged in right there in that hole. And we do the same on this side and we lift it off. Then we swing this armature up and now we have a rounded peg here that goes into a hole right there. So we bring that forward and same on the other side. We rotate it up and we bring that forward. We bring out the hoof. We rotate that down. We bring out the hoof and we rotate that down. I will say this, once you do this, um, you know, you can just put that straight forward, but the hoof is kind of at an angle, so really what you're supposed to do is turn this section and then turn the lower section. And that will give you a little bit of a knee. So we'll do that on the other side here as well. We turn that around and we turn that around. Um, I'll also say this, not on Fortis, but on Bovis, these sections here, they like to pop out. It's just a little ball joint, so it's not a big deal, but it does happen. Now you have an option. You can just bring the legs back together. <clears throat> you can lift this off of the side, straighten it out, bring it down around like that. Same here. And bring it down around like that. Now, I don't have these oriented right because again, you should turn this lower piece and then turn the hoof around, but basically, you can have him like this. The feet that are folded up are now on his back, and the other section, as I said, it's down, and I'll put that knee, knee pad up, is down as part of his belly. You can do this. You certainly could. There's no real reason why you can't. I just don't think it looks as good. It's the easier option, no doubt because you have to do more effort in order to get him to look the way I like for him to look. And we're going to go through that effort now. So, what do we do to get him the way that I like for him to look? We pick up the, the foot that's pegged on. And this one. And we open these back flaps out. Really, you want to have that foot up so that it can kind of come down around the side of the rear hoof, I suppose we would say. It just makes it easier because what we have now are the thighs up inside of the shins and calves um, and you want as much room as possible to be able to fold these legs down, which we do need to do if we want to get him in a different orientation. Um, take out those kneecap sections to give ourselves as much room as possible to work and then rotate down and oop. Rotate down. We do this so that we can get to his waist. These two little hip skirts, front skirts, pouches, whatever, they need to go rotated now to the back. But it's no point in putting them back there yet because they're going to move when we rotate the waist. And we do need to rotate the waist now. So we will rotate the waist all the way around. Now, we will take these sections and bring them to the back. They are, I just popped one of them off. It's just a little ball joint, but they do like to pop off a little easier on this guy than on Fortis, for whatever peculiar reason. We bring this one back, and both of them like to pop off on this guy. And we just sort of position them like that. We're gonna fold these legs now up over these pieces. So we fold that leg up. You might want to get this little ankle hinge out of the way. But we fold that one up. And then we fold that one up. And we tab them together. Then we come to the side here. We bring this down, bring the foot back down, and bring this all the way underneath. Same over there. And now we need to orient these legs. So we 
and it's a little bit of a pain to get the clearance here to do this. There you go. We bring that down, and same over here. We bring that down. We will rotate the leg here. Uh, do we want to rotate? Yeah, rotate the leg. No. My mistake. We don't need to rotate the leg there now. Like that. And we do the same on the other side. We rotate the foot around like that. And boom, in the end, here you have Bobus. He looks pretty cool as a brash bull, I do think. And his accessories can also go attached to him. We'll put them on now just to kind of show it off. The uh, bladed pieces can go up on the front in these rounded slots here. So we could take this one and it should fit in there like that. The other one can go on, of course, on the other that. side. These can go on his hind legs. Oh, sorry, there's rounded pegs on the side. That's how you attach them back here. Lining it up is the biggest pain. And I, I, I'm telling you now, doing it on camera is making it look a lot harder than what it is. You put down that knee and down that knee, and we're almost there. We only have one thing left to do. Um, we have a couple of peg holes up on his back, and his foot piece can go on it. Now, I have heard again that the regularly painted version of this guy is um, prone to not being able to include the foot piece here because we don't have the clearance for it. I think we do on the Nero Rex version. And indeed, as you can see, we certainly do. Um, and it's, it's uh, not just rested there, like it's, it's solid, we can lift him up. Um, I feel like the pegs might be a little bit shorter, but it still goes on absolutely no problem whatsoever. Okay, we still have one mode to get through, his robot mode. So let's remove all of this stuff off of him and we will get to that next. And now we are back to our basic bull. This is not a hard transformation. It is um, a little bit fiddly at a couple of parts, but it's not a hard transformation. Uh, where will we begin? Um, probably, probably start at the top and work our way down. So, we're going to stand him up like this. And this head, actually I'm going to just reposition things ever so slightly here, just so we can get an easier look at this guy. So, as I was saying, this head uh, works the same as Fortis, where the face is not the lower jaw, but it's in the lower jaw. You sort of need to open the lower jaw a little bit. It does not open as much on this guy. I think the head might be a bit bulkier. And you kind of need to reach inside and begin to push the robot face forward like that. Um, it's, again, it's a fine face sculpt. It's a bit of a pain to get there, but it's a fine face sculpt. <clears throat> I don't have, I don't have any issues with it, but the entire head does come all the way back, which means because the combiner peg does stick up a little higher than the shoulders, you don't have the clearance if you don't have that combiner peg down. You won't be able to get the face out. It just, it just does not work. So you got to have the combiner peg down for this guy. Uh, that's a little bit unfortunate, I think. Then we come to the arms. They're easy. We will take this piece and turn it around, and this piece and turn it around, and then this whole section can kind of swing that around to the back of the arm. There's a little hole on the hoof that goes over a little notch right there to sort of hold it in position. It's loose, but it works. Then we just open the arm out and bring out his fist. This armature here, actually, I made a mistake there. This armature here, or arm pad, rotates forward. Uh, one of these arm pads loves to pop off on this guy. Then we bring this up. I told you that the hoof pegs in over 
uh, a black section on this, that's not true. There's a little gray ta <coughs> tab on the back of the arm and that's what it goes in over. So there's one arm, done. We do the exact same thing over here. It's pretty fluid actually. Though I kind of explained each step there, you just turn that, turn that, bring the whole thing down and around, bring out the upper arm and the fist, rotate this arm pad forward, bring the hoof up the rest of the way. Straighten that up so that it locks in over, right there. And here we have the upper body done. Now we need to deal with the more challenging part, his lower body. So, for the lower body on this guy, we need to take the hoof and really just bring it up. <clears throat> uh, you might need to actually turn this section around, my mistake, and bring it up. Over here, you do the same thing, you just bring this up. Maybe I didn't have to turn that hoof section around. Maybe not. I think you can kind of do what you want there. I'm sure there's an official way, but the instructions with this guy are such garbage that it's difficult to kind of know what to do there. Either way, you want the legs kind of mashed up on the side. Um, we're probably going to rotate this whole section, so don't lock it in yet because we need to get the feet and stuff here out of the way. I would suggest to you that you might want to kind of put it at this angle for now. It's just easier to work the feet around. So, speaking of those feet, they need to come unpegged, and then we open out these sections here. If the feet are extended, they can kind of go down over this, and it makes it easier to have more space here to open out, as I previously mentioned. So, we come back here, you might even want to bring out the little kind of ankle sections. We rotate, get those arms out of the way. We rotate these legs down around, make sure that there's clearance, which is admittedly a little bit of a pain. You might even want to split the legs and do them one at a time. That might be easier. Bring it down. Oh, and if you didn't do it, bring the whole knee pad forward. There, I didn't do that. Bring that knee pad forward and rotate the entire arm or leg down. Okay, we're almost done, thankfully. Now a lot of people say that you can't do, and I mentioned this before, that you can't do the feet, so they just close this up and bring the foot back up and close this up and bring the foot back up because they say that the armatures in here are not as effective as they are on the actual feral rex and they just stand him up like this. That is not what we do and I'm going to adjust things here a little bit before I explain what we do do. So here's how we handle this. First we'll bring these hip pieces out to the front just because we can. We will also before we do the feet reach to the back of the leg and bring the thigh filler piece out on this side and the thigh filler piece out on this side. This is a tighter piece over here, this one. Um, but that's, you know, and you could, I guess you could have it work this way if you want, but it doesn't stand particularly great. So dealing with these back here, you have them just left. What you need to do is have the entire thing open. You need to Turn the foot at the ball joint, which is not easy, and then you're going to kind of have it in between the two heel pieces, and you have this in between the two heel pieces, and then you're going to sort of flip it around that way. So we take this and we turn it. Not great clearance, admittedly. Then we flip it up over and bring it out. And I just popped the ball joint there. That's what, that's what the weakness is with this guy. You're probably going to pop that ball joint doing this. You may or may not, depending on how careful you are with it. When you have that much done, you close the leg up, you turn the foot around, and you bring it up. 
and now he does have a foot. We're going to try it again over here and see if we have better luck. So we bring the foot off, we open this whole leg section out, we tediously turn this at the ball joint. It's like I said, it's not fun. And it squeaks. We bring the foot up and over. Did I lose it then? No, I did not lose it then. We close this up, we rotate the foot, and we bring it forward. And boom. In the end, there you have Bovis. We're going to come in closer on him, have a discussion uh, about his color and his articulation and everything else, as well as how his accessories integrate on him. Okay, so let's talk about his transformation first. <sighs> Again, it's not that it's hard. It's just you have a couple of pieces on this guy that like to fall off. I, I would say his transformation is about the same as... Fortis, it's about a seven, especially with how challenging those feet are. My guess is, however, that things are toleranced, of course, better on the official MMC release. I would venture to say to you that in that case, it's probably more like a nine or a ten. It's pretty simple, yet ingenious. Then we need to talk about the color for this guy. Um, it's... It's all right. Uh, I love this color scheme, so it's a 10, but it is not indicative of the character of Tantrum. So let's sort of talk about that. The whole head section up here would be red with a yellow face. That's, that's pretty good. That's fairly accurate. Um, <coughs> again, if we're going by the toy, <coughs> it's hard to go by the animation here because there was so much variation. These gray hooves here and here. Oh, by the way, I didn't do this, but these need to go rotated to the correct position. And they tab in. Uh, those hooves are, are red. His lower legs, instead of being black like they should be, are orange with red kneecaps. That's kind of inaccurate. Though the feet are red, and they should be. On his arms, his forearms are silver, his hands are black, his forearms are silver, which is fine. But that silver extends further up uh, his bicep and kind of goes uh, uh, part way up on this shoulder pad. That's taking the silver a little too high. Uh, those sections should be black. I get why it was done because the very upper section here is supposed to be like his shoulder pad that comes out. And then it's supposed to go into his arm underneath. But that upper section should be black. His paint is all right. You know that it is um, tantrum. By the way, on the main body, we have some red up here. This grill is still silver with a bit of a red outline. There's a lot of orange on the body. It's, it's not bad. You know, like I said, who it is. I do still think that that face is oversized for the body. And it was on the original release as well in my humble opinion. I just felt like it was too big for the body even though it looks great. That of course is just personal taste. I would say that it's about, I would say it's about an eight. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Not perfect but it's pretty good. Now of course that also leads us to a comment here about Athon which is the version of Tantrum that was released by TFC Toys as part of their Ares combiner. Um, that has a lot more red on it, uh, on the forearms, uh, on the main body. It still has an orange set of shins. It doesn't really have the shoulder pads like we picture it, and it doesn't seem to have this head up behind. It's, it's one of those things like I like it, but it does not make me think of the character it's supposed to be. I would say that the paint apps for that one are about are about a five. 
this is definitely the more accurate looking version of that character if we are talking about wanting something that's Voyager size because the actual release of this as well as the TFC release are both about Voyager size. This however is larger and just to prove that before we go on, here he is next to the Power of the Primes Grimlock uh, and you can see he's much bigger here. The official release is about this size, a bit bulkier, maybe slightly taller, um, but it's about a Voyager size. Taking him out of it, this guy scales better with, for example, the Transformers Power of the Primes Leader Class Evolution Optimus Prime. They look pretty good together, although I still think his face is just too big. That being said, this Optimus is about masterpiece size, roughly so. I would venture to say whether you get the Nero Rex repaint or the original kind of coloring, the Jin Bao KO oversized version of Feral Rex or Nero Rex in this case is probably the way to go if you are a masterpiece collector, at least for now. So taking that back out of it. You see, when we're talking about this Voyager scale, we do have two options. And of course it comes down to personal taste. For my mind, I feel like this is more indicative of the character. I don't think that even in its proper color schemes, it is the ideal version of this guy, but it's certainly pretty good and you're not mistaking who it is. In the case of Ares, if you didn't know that it was Tantrum, I don't think that you would draw the comparison. It is highly stylized, in my opinion, though I'll say this. The beast mode for that one is painted pretty gloriously. I totally dig it, but that's just me. All right, so what about his accessories? Well, the blasters uh, can fit in his hand fine. They're kind of loose, but if you fiddle it enough, they'll fit. The swords are a pain to get in there, but you can do it. You gotta kind of wedge it in the side and then turn it forward. I'm not doing it now because it's just going to take up unnecessary time. You can put all of these things on him. He has rounded ports on his hip, uh, thigh filler sections. And I like the thigh filler sections because they do make a rather spindly leg look more bulky. And this guy should be bulky. We put the other one over on this side. And in terms of these things, we can place one here. I'm going to place it kind of facing backward so that it's on his forearm there and we can place this one there and he has everything just fine on him. So far we have about a 7 for the transformation only because of the fiddly bits on this guy. Admittedly if you have the money to spend a you know a hundred dollars on a figure Going the official Feral Rex route is the way to go. Uh, if you want something upsized and for a much cheaper cost, then this is probably the way to go. If you're an MP collector, this is probably the way to go. But grading things on this mold, we have a 7 for transformation. Uh, as a representation of the character, we have about an 8. This guy's about a 7.5. What about his articulation? Oh. And I didn't mention this, but in this mode, you can still attach the foot piece on the back as well. Again, if you can line it up like that, no problem. Okay, so you've seen me jostle this guy a nice bit, and guess what? He stays stood up. His feet are solid, I think more solid than Fortis is. In terms of the rest of his articulation, well, in leg mode, it's it's all oh, right there's a lot of junk there in his animal mode the you know the front legs can move out to the sides and they have a bit of a knee bend and you can kind of wiggle the hoof the rear legs the same thing the head can go side to side there and the head can go side to side only a little bit here not much it's highly limited because of how far back you need it you can probably bring it forward a bit and get a slightly wider range of motion but now you're starting to kind of crunch up his his robot face a little bit. Uh, the arms, they can go all the way around. They can go out to the side, you know, about that far. It's all right, not perfect, but it's all right. 
things sort of start to bang into the animal head. You could probably get them out further if not for that. We have a bicep swivel. We have a very deep elbow. Uh, these hands do not have wrists, but he comes with alternate hands, so you can pop these out, pop those in, and he does have a wrist swivel. We have a waist, which is nice. Uh, we have, get those to the side a bit, a leg that can go forward on a nice, kind of, not a clicky ratchet, but it's a nice, smooth, strong ratchet. Uh, same with going back, no problem. We have thigh rotation, though it's very tight. We can bring the legs respectably far out to do the splits. We have a, if I have this incorrectly, and I obviously don't. I had the same problem with um, Fortis, where I thought the knee was hindered because I, I had something not pegged in properly there. I'm having the same sort of issue here. If I open it up. Hmm. Oh, look at that. I went to bend the knee and I thought I was having the same problem. I'm not. This time, this piece right here is hitting off of the thigh filler. So you might have to even bring the thigh filler ahead a little bit more if you want additional articulation. Hmm, I can't get the knee up very good with the thigh filler out to the side. What if the thigh filler is taken to the back? Yeah, so if you take this thigh filler, because in this case it is kind of hitting out the side, but if you take the thigh filler and bring it to the back of the leg again, you do get a 90 degree. I'm guessing that that is a tolerance issue on the KO. So I'm not really going to hold it against them. I'm going to say 90 degrees. We have this piece here that can move out of the way. The toes go down and up and a little to the side, but they're solid. His articulation, it's about a nine. It's really quite effective. Actually, you know what? I'm going to say his articulation is about an eight and a half because you do, if you want the full range of motion with the knee, you do kind of have to move those thigh fillers from the sides. That's a little unfortunate, but I don't think it's a big deal. It certainly doesn't ruin the guy by any stretch of the imagination. And in fact, perhaps you want to leave them on the back just to give this guy a slightly different silhouette than his mold mate. Overall, just like Fortis, this guy is about an eight. It's pretty good. It's not perfect, but I can see the argument for why people absolutely dig it. It's a fun toy. It's a good toy. And I'm sure that the actual Feral Rex Combiner is better yet again. There's no doubt in my mind. If this guy's an eight, that's probably a, a, a good nine, nine and a half. But in either case, I still think that face is too big. And the silhouette for me is a little bit more stylized than I would like. Of course, it comes down, as I've stated before, to personal taste. And that's okay too. There's certainly an argument to be made for the official release and for this KO, depending on your collecting habits. And we're back here now, and as you can see, a lot of things on this guy are smooth. And the things that aren't, I, I assume is because he's a KO. Do I know if the actual version encounters these same issues? No, of course not. I don't have access to that. But I can say this, that I do believe that the actual version is worth the price of admission because it is solid in all of its modes. I don't know as a leg yet quite how effective it will be. We'll see that when we get this guy combined later on. But I will say this, that the materials, the engineering, the tooling, though somewhat simplistic in nature, are for the most part largely effective. And the issues on the KO such as these feet again, I think are specific to the KO, I think. So if the real one is worth the cost of admission, what about this guy? Well, he's at a reduced price. He's bigger. He fits in in a different type of collection. And even though he's not perfect, I certainly think he's worth the consideration if he fits your collecting needs. Anyway, let me know what you think about this guy, if you like him or not. 
You know I love to hear from you guys. Keep the conversation going. I am going to again say please hit that subscribe button. Show a bit of love and support. It is beyond appreciated. I very much thank you for giving me some of your extremely valuable time and look forward to the next time that you and I get together for another visit right here inside the video.